Oh my God, hold on just a second, hold on. I was about to say good morning and all of a sudden a coughing thing like announced itself. Hello everyone, good morning, welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our morning get together live here on Facebook where we take a look at headlines from our city, our state and our country. Um, although today it's mostly headlines from our country as we have to focus on a single incident that took place yesterday and we're focusing on a violent incident not because we choose to but because it's all over the news and i want to make sure that we provide as much uh accurate information as we can given a big capture of a member of a cartel here in mexico yesterday but before we go into that as always i want to welcome everyone for being a part of our broadcast. And I want to particularly, as always, welcome those of you that are watching live for the first time. If that is your case, just write the word new in your comment. We'll give you a nice little welcome. If there's an important comment that you wish to share with everyone, feel free to add a capital letter Q at the beginning of your comment, and we will take it from there. Let us get started with the news. Okay, so you may or may not have heard about this. If you haven't, you will, more than likely. Yesterday morning, federal authorities successfully ambushed and arrested Ovidio Guzman, son of Joaquin El Chapo Guzman in Culiacán, in the state of Sinaloa. Unfortunately, this event has unleashed a series of violent manifestations through the state. The operative took place just three days prior to the arrival of U.S. President Joe Biden uh, to Mexico for a summit with President López Obrador and with uh, uh, Prime Minister um, oh, Justin Trudeau. Uh, and of course, the United States is offering a $5 million reward for capturing Ovidio Guzman. The arrest, which also included several cartel members, it was not just Ovidio Guzman who was captured, resulted in a series of um, violent retaliations executed by the cartel in different parts of the state. In Culiacán's International Airport, a commercial plane that was about to take off received gunshots, sending passengers on board into a panic. The cartel likes to set things on fire, and to date, there have been 19 streets blocked with vehicles set on fire. 200 vehicles have been stolen and robberies have taken place. As a result of the operative, of course, the state of Sonora has shielded its borders with, um, with the state of Sinaloa. Uh, and Nayar I'm sorry, the state of Nayarit has shielded its borders. There's a mistake in my, my headline, um, both the airports in Culiacán and Mazatlán were closed and uh, several bus companies have canceled runs 
headed into Sinaloa from Puerto Vallarta and other cities until further notice. So even if you were planning a lovely weekend in Mazatlán, you probably wouldn't want to go there. You probably couldn't even get there if you wanted to. Um, who is this guy? Who is Ovidio Guzman? Well, he's 32 years old. He's one of four children El Chapo Guzman had on his second marriage. Uh, Chapo Guzman had previously had four other children with his first wife. And presently, Ovidio, along with some of his brothers, stepped up to be in charge of the Sinaloa cartel when their father was arrested and extradited to the United States. Along with his brother, Joaquin Ovidio, uh, coordinated actions in a criminal group known as the Guzman Lopez Transnational Criminal Organization following the footsteps of their father and smuggling substances such as marijuana, cocaine, and fentanyl into the United States, which explains why the United States has a reward um, on them. Now, Joe Biden, who has agreed to land at the new um, Felipe Angeles International Airport, um, is, I mean, he's going to be arriving at the new international airport, and now people are wondering what is going to happen uh with this situation after his arrival. And I didn't get to summarize all the headlines that I wanted to summarize this morning, but um, of course, the governor of Nayarit and, um, and the governor of Jalisco have both come out to say it's been, um, it's been challenging north of, the, of our country, but things are okay in Nayarit, things are okay in the state of Jalisco. There is not much we should be worrying about living here. The violence is not currently taking place here. And again, I am sorry that so much of today's broadcast takes uh, focus on this incident. I just wanted you to get the information that is available from the papers, not so much from what you hear uh, in, in other sources that are less reliable. Um, most of the headlines that I'm reading today say that things are back to normal. Of course, it is easy to be apprehensive about these kinds of things. And uh, we will continue to follow this uh, incident to see if other ramifications stem from it. And that is pretty much what we have for formal uh, news today. So let us take a quick look at the weather and then we'll take a look at your comments, some of which have caught my attention. But first, let's take a look at the weather forecast. Ah, Snarky Weather says, since the beginning of time, mankind has yearned to destroy the sun. Stupid mankind. Well, I don't know that we've done that. What I do know is that it is 26 degrees right now. It is 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Humidity is at 63%. And, uh, of course, our weather forecast for today, which is, oh, my God, today is Friday. How fun. Humid uh, throughout the day with a high of 29 and a low of 18. I don't even know what day it is. Tomorrow, Saturday, it's going to be a clear day with a high of 30 and a low of 17. And uh, Sunday should be another clear day with a high of 31 and a low of 19. And this brings us to a couple of other headlines that I wanted to share with you. Of course, today is uh, Dia de los Reyes or Three Wise Men Day. And today is the day in which we pick out on, uh, on Rosca de Reyes, this very traditional bread that we've been talking about. Uh, but I wanted to share a little factoid about the Rosca de Reyes, one of the traditional ingredients um, that are part or have been part of the Rosca de Reyes is called a citron. A citron is part of the choice of caramelized fruit that is usually placed on top of the bread to decorate it. Of course, we know that these decorations are supposed to be a symbol for the jewels that were worn by the three wise men in their crowns. But this business of eating a citron, 
uh, which is very sweet and it has a texture to it, has become controversial and in fact is not even legal anymore. Why is that? Well, because a citron comes from a plant, from a type of cactus, which is called Bisnaga Barril de Acitron. And this uh, particular cactus is now a protected species in Mexico because <clears throat> there's not that much of it out there. So authorities this year are suggesting that if you buy Rosca de Reyes, you make sure that your Rosca de Reyes does not have any acitron. Now, how would you know acitron if you're probably not even familiar with it to begin with? Well, rest assured that it is unlikely that any Rosca de Reyes that you buy at established bakeries or supermarkets will have acitron in it. It's more likely that in small towns or in, in, in small pueblos where uh, most of the roscas or the breads are handcrafted. That is the, the situation in which you might run into roscas with acitron. Uh, if you want to be socially responsible, you can simply ask, is there any acitron in my rosca? Um, which sounds kind of kinky when you think about it, but, you know, it is what it is. And last but not least... Um, I wanted to follow up on the story from yesterday. Yesterday, we were talking about uh, so many people looking for employees. And yes, the day before, I ran into Robin Spencer, who said hello yesterday. And her her company is indeed called Pig Out Groceries. Uh, Robin is in the business of um, shopping for us, shopping for people that want to have door-to-door uh, deliveries done and she's looking for help. So I am going to read what she sent me. She's looking for qualified shoppers to help out with expanding the areas of delivery service for pig out service. The qualifications is that people must have a vehicle. People must speak English. Uh, people must have email and phone skills in order to communicate with clients and other team shoppers. Uh, they should like to grocery shop and work well with clients, plan a calendar that is flexible with daytime availability. Uh, they need to live in Puerto Vallarta full time. And if anybody is interested in a job like this, you can contact Robin Spencer directly. She is a very much liked and very much trusted delivery person here in Puerto Vallarta. And she's an overall wonderful gal and a, and a friend of mine. Okay, so this was it. Let me turn over to your comments just to see your remarks and your reactions. Let's see. We have good mornings as always. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, and more good morning. <clears throat> Oh, Terry says, good morning. Scored a slice of Costco Rosca de Reyes. I can taste why the lineups. Yes, the lineups apparently to get your Rosca de Reyes at Costco were fairly chaotic from what I heard and what I saw. Uh, let's see. Oh, and if you want to get some free Rosca de Reyes, all you have to do is stop at Paul's Hotel Mercurio at 3 p.m. There's going to be Rosca for the staff and anybody else who shows up. That's very generous of you, my dear Paul. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, let's see what else we have. Snow reports from north of the border. Uh, I guess you really got some of us the other day with the news about Zona Romantica becoming a no-car zone on April 1st. <laughs> yes, we did do that, um, and I'd be very flattered if that became a rumor because, of course, as you know, we did that on Dia de los Inocentes, and um, it was supposed to be nothing more than a friendly 
Sherry Cooper is wondering if all his kids are part of the criminal organization. Well, Sherry, there was a big article about who this gentleman is. He is. Um, it's it's interesting because I mean they from what I read these are well educated kids. Uh, Ovidio Guzman went to school, elementary school, in a very prestigious elementary school in Mexico City. He lived in Lomas del Pedregal, which is a very fancy neighborhood in Mexico City. So um, they're cultured to the extent that one can be cultured growing up in that kind of an environment. Um, I wonder if it is even possible for one of the kids to say, well, you know, I don't I don't want to follow this line of work. I want to do something else. I wonder if the whole environment just sort of draws you inevitably into that line of work. But who knows? Who knows? Uh, <clears throat> oh, no. Oh, no. Kathy Souza says, good morning. After three years of staying COVID free, it hit me like a Mack truck yesterday afternoon. Despite wearing masks everywhere and sanitizing, I'm hoping I haven't exposed anyone else. Most importantly, Kathy, I hope you're doing okay. Um, yes, it hits you like a Mack truck. It hit me that way when I got it. And I truly, truly hope you recover quickly. Um, best wishes and good vibes headed in your general direction. Um... Uh, da -da -da -da. Colleen, well, several of you are thanking me for the information. Well, again, it's bound to be in your conversations out there. I just hate it when we get all worked up over things that are not factual. So what I'm telling you is essentially what I've read in the headlines. Um, and I'm going to be sharing all of those in the show notes, of course. Thank you for the info. We have driven to the United States a few times and never considered the borders being close, said Colleen Ferris in her comment. And again, you know, it's not that they're closed, closed. You know, you can still drive through them. You know, there are just military people at the borders, you know, checking out who's going, who's coming, so forth and so on. You can drive through if you want to, but um, uh, but you will be exposed to, um, you know, questioning and perhaps they're going to look at your car and so forth and so on. And that can seem unnerving to some. And unfortunately, if you start getting nervous, they might think you're up to something. So it's one of those things. Who needs that, actually? Uh, let's see. Mike Miller has finally been able to find us live. We watch on YouTube regularly. Thank you for your efforts. Well, thank you for joining us live today. <laughs> Yes, thank you very much. Um, let's see what else. The Sinaloa cartel isn't the cartel that owns money laundering operations and controls the sale of drugs here in Puerto Vallarta. This is true. This is true. Indeed, the cartel that is um, of concern here in Puerto Vallarta is the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación. That's a different... That's a different cartel, um, but it's good to, to clarify that. Um, Nancy says, thanks for all the information. I appreciate you. Well, I appreciate you back, Nancy. Um, <clears throat> let's see. There's a cue here. Yippee, going to Whiskey Kitchen for dinner today. Yay. And got our tickets to Encanto for Wine and Cheese Show this Monday. Oh, that's wonderful, Sherry. That's wonderful. I'd be looking forward to seeing you there. It should be a lot of fun. I still don't know exactly what Gouda Gabor is going to ask me, so I am excited to, to provide all the answers that she needs. Uh, let's see. Thank you for taking the time to break this week's incidents in Sinaloa. Flipping through the channels this morning, I stumbled across a not-so-fair and balanced news source from north of the border that shares their name with a cute and fuzzy woodland animal and their morning anchors attempted to explain the complexities around these matters was painful to watch. <clears throat> oh, Muffin. Well, I hear you. I hear you. Of course, north of the border, they have commentary on everything and anything, but... You know, we rely on local news sources and we will continue to do that. We'll just see how this one unfolds in the days that follow. Um, let's see. 
They were giving out samples of Rosca de Reyes yesterday at Soriana. First time we ever t tried it. Very good, says Dan. Well, it is it is a good it is a good thing to eat. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Lots of samples at La Comer too. Well, yeah, they've made all these fracking bread. Now they want to make sure that they get to sell it before it goes stale. Uh, everybody's having Rosca de Reyes. Fernando is in Mexico City having Rosca de Reyes. I am not having Rosca de Reyes, but I may go to the supermarket later on today. Uh, oh, Brian sends a report from Guadalajara. Uh, Brian and his husband are enjoying Luisa's and, and Luke's company in Guadalajara. That is wonderful. Um... Let's see what else we have. Uh, 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 uh. I think we are pretty much done. Yes, I see that we are pretty much done. These are the news for today. And, um, you know, I hate have being the, the bearer of unpleasant news, but it's part of our commitment to being uh, responsible with our coverage here. Hopefully tomorrow's bit of news will be more cheerful than today's, um, but we'll keep an eye on it between now and then. Stay kind, stay happy, stay grateful, stay well informed, and stay in touch. Have a great day.